Hey guys, welcome back. So up to this point, we have been able to allow a user to take a picture or choose a picture from gallery. So a user can choose a picture and we are able to display it here. So in this video, I want us to set up Firebase and also be able to upload this picture when they click submit here. So we're going to be focusing mainly on iOS. So if we get some time, we can go on Android. But if we don't, the Android section for the Firebase setup will be another video. So let's start with the iOS. Now, to get started, you're going to go to console.firebase.google.com. So you will have some projects, but if you don't have a project, go and create a new project. So I'm going to go create this project. It's going to be called RN Contacts. Then I'm going to click Continue. I'm going to click the defaults. I'm going to keep the defaults. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and create the project. All right, so working with Firebase, we will be requiring to use this module called React Native Firebase. So React Native Firebase basically allows you to interface with all the Firebase features in React Native. It has integration with most of the Firebase features. So most likely you will be here if you want to use Firebase in your apps. So to get started, we need to install this module, the React Native Firebase app module. So we want to go to our terminal and install it. Then if you're in iOS, you want to do yarn pod. So now that it's done, let's go ahead and do the yarn pod. So it installs the necessary pods. Let's go down here, the iOS setup. So for the iOS setup, we need a file called Google services infolist So to get that, we're going to get it from Firebase. So now that it's done creating, we can go ahead and add a, an iOS app to this project. So to add an iOS app, you want to click on add app, then choose iOS. Now here, you're going to need the bundle ID. So for the bundle ID, you're going to want to go to your Xcode and then you're going to want to open it up. So this is our project, it's open now. So now that it's open, you can click on the project. And now when you click on the project up here, you're going to have this menu here. So that's why we have your bundle identifier. So you can change your bundle identifier to anything you want. So I've already changed mine to this one, which looks good to me. Change, be sure to change yours to the one you want. Now, when you're sure about the bundle ID, you can now come in into Firebase, copy it, and then paste it there. Then you can register your app. It's going to take a while, and then it's going to give you an option to download this PLIST file. So I'm going to click download. And then you see that it gets downloaded. So once you get it, let's first complete up with this, these steps. So don't worry so much about this. We just click continue because we will set it up in the in this React Native Firebase iOS setup. So just go ahead and continue. Now that we have this file, let's open it up. We need to add it to Xcode. So to add it to Xcode, you want to go to Xcode, then click on your project and you want to say add files. So when you click add files, it's going to go ahead and open up your EFG. This is the one. Then I'm going to say, okay, I want to add it. So I'm going to click add. And when you click add, you see it gets added here. So now that we have that, let's go ahead, let's continue with the setup. See, we have it downloaded. Now we need to open Xcode and also open the project. Also add files, we've done this. Now this is done. We need to configure Firebase with iOS credentials. So we do this by going to our appdelegates.m file. So we're gonna open it up. So appdelegates.m is here. And by the way, guys, side note, if you're if at any point you're unable to find these files, let's say you're, you come in here and you're, you're, you're not able to see this navigator for the files, you, you want to come in here and use this kind, this menu here to toggle the different sections of the UI. So this brings in the file, this brings in the, the files, then this brings in the properties and the middle shows the details of what's selected in the files. So be sure to check here if you're missing to see any of these sections. So now that we have that, we want to go to appdelegates.m, then we want to import we want to import the firebase.h. Now, of course, we need to follow the same import structure. So here, be sure that you're importing it using the slash. Then you want to go down before before where you have did finish launching with options then you want to add this check. So we're going to come to did finish launching with options. So did finish launching with options. This is where it is. So in here, before we return the yes, actually, I'm going to put it here on top. 
So we're gonna check if the Firebase module is empty, then we'll configure it. So now that we have this, we can come back to our application and rerun iOS. Okay, so we can come back here, then let's rerun yarn iOS to check if things are still working. So that should go ahead. Uh, that should go ahead rebuild the project. And if there any if there are new things, be rebuild it and sync them with our app. So moving on. So for now we are going to go to the section where we can add the storage. So we want to go to cloud storage now to be able to to read or write to Firebase storage. We need to make sure that the user doing that has the necessary permissions. So in the project you want to go to storage. When this opens up, you want to say get started. Then click next, click next here. So it's gonna go ahead and create a default bucket for us. Now, when it's created a default bucket, then we can change some rules to which users can read or write to that bucket. So let it finish doing what it's doing. Now that it has created the bucket, you want to go to the rules. So since we are not using Firebase storage to authenticate our users, we might not be able to know that this user is authenticated or not, but so for us, what we're gonna do is we're going to be changing this to allow any user to write or read to this bucket. So you can say allow read or write if true. Then you can click publish. It's gonna go ahead and save the rules. Then now in Firebase storage, we also want to add the individual storage module. So we can do yarn add that and then pod. So you can add that, then let's also yarn pod. Okay. So that's gonna go ahead and set it up. Now to go ahead and save the picture, I'm going to go to our helpers and then I'm going to have a helper to upload the picture. So I'm gonna call it upload image. So first off to use it, you will notice that here, let's see down here, we need to import the storage, of course. So I'm gonna go here, import the storage, then I'm going to have a function Let's say export default function. So this function will be giving us the file it wants us to upload. So we can do export default file. Then in here, we can specify the path we want to upload to in Firebase. So we want to do something like const path equals, so we'll create a folder in Firebase called contact pictures. So contact pictures. Then of course we want to store under the current user. So for now, I'm just going to put user here, but we will be passing like a dynamic parameter. We would be. Then also we can go under a specific contact. For example, we'll be using like, we could be using like the phone number. So let's put like 777, then put a slash. Then here we have to put a unique name for the file. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and add a file name like this. So we'll be picking the name from the file when we send it. Now when we have this, then now when we have the path, we can go ahead and send it. So to to be able to upload the picture, we need a reference which we will upload to. So here I'm going to have a const ref. So the ref, we use storage to create it. So storage.ref. So when you say ref, you can give it a path. Now that we have the ref, we are going to create something called a task. So a task basically will be like the process that will tell us what's happening when we're uploading a file. So you can do ref, then we want to call put file. Put, so we can do ref, then we want to call put file. So put file takes in the local file path. So remember when we choose a picture here and save it, we save the local file path and it's what we show here. Now we will pick, we'll be picking that from file.path. like this. Okay, so now that we have that, now we can use our task to upload. So what we'll do is do task.then. That will return for us the success when the task has completed, if we have finished to upload this file. So for then, we are going to need to get the download URI. So we're gonna make another call to Firebase. So I'm going to make this function as sync because we need to await getting the download URI. Then here, we are going to try to get the download URI. So I'm gonna call it URL. Then we will be awaiting dot, we want to do storage dot ref. So we already know our ref. So our ref 
is the path up there. So we'll do storage.ref and by the way this should be executed, it's a function. So that means we can just do ref here and not have to do this. So we can do ref dot get download URL and then that's gonna give us the download URL. So now that we have the download URL here, we can send it back to our app and the app can upload it to in the process of, of saving this information. So we're gonna be sending a callback. So here I'm gonna be saying on success, then passing the URL. So let's go ahead and accept the callback here. So instead here, we'll also accept the callback. So it's gonna be on success. So when it succeeds, we are going to be sending it. So when it fails, we also need to handle the error. So here we can have the 10. So in the root 10, of course, it's going to be sending us the error. Then for now, let's have like on error. On error that the user will pass in and then we give the, the, the error to the user. So let's save it. So let's also pick the on error here. Okay, so now we have a, f a function that's going to help us save pictures to Firebase. So we can come back to our to our submit here and check if we really have the the local file we're just gonna do a simple check so we're gonna say if we have the local file now in the local file we're gonna check remember by default it's gonna be null so we want to check if we have it there so whenever we have it there each file will have a size property so we can check if we have size and remember, since this is null, we don't want to check it like that. We want to check it using the coercion operator. So we want to check if we have that. So if we have the local file, then we want to go ahead and upload it. Now we can call our upload function, our upload image helper. Then it takes in the file. So we can just pass the upload, the local file. So here, let's make sure we have the local file for debugging. So when we say upload file, we can do a success. So remember in, on our success, we need to pass a function to handle the success. So we can do this also, whenever there is an error, we also need to handle, we to handle it like this by passing those two callbacks. Okay. So when it succeeds, remember it gives us the URL. So whenever it succeeds, it's going to send us the URL in the callback that is here. So if it sends it, then we want to be able to update our contact and also create and also call create contact. So I'm going to copy this and also bring it here on when we have already finished to upload the picture. So for the payload, remember now we have the URL from the from the remember now we have the URL from Firebase. So we want to be able to also send it. So we're going to be spreading everything we have on the form and updating the contact picture. So contact picture like this, then we are going to be sending the URL like that. So this means that whenever we have a picture and the user is submitting, we are going to go ahead and upload it. So whenever we upload it and it succeeds, which is sent in this on success callback, then we are going to be changing our local profile pic, our local contact picture to the URL and then calling the create contact action. So whenever there is an error, we also will need it. But one thing that you notice that whenever a user clicks here, and there is a picture, we want to first upload it before we actually make the API call. So you will know that whenever we are uploading, this button needs to show like a learning indicator, but the process to upload the file to Firebase doesn't really have a way to track it right now. So we're gonna come over here and ha have some local state. So I'm gonna copy this, then I'm going to have uploading, then set is uploading. Set is uploading like this. Then it's gonna start out as false. So if it's false, then we can come here. When we start to upload or right here, then we can set it to true. Also, when it finishes, we can set it to false. So we just come over here and set it to false like this. Then I'm going to copy this Whenever it fails, so the failure will be here, we can also turn it to false. Then if you have an error, let's just pick it because we are sending it and then let's console log it for debugging purposes. Okay, so now that we are doing this, we can now use this upload for the image and also tell this button to load whenever the image is uploading. 
so we just come over here where we have loading so loading will be the loading from the the context also the upload loading so whenever we're uploading or loading the loading is going to be true meaning this should adapt to that okay so now that we have that on setup let's go ahead and test it i believe we are about so we're going to come here and then i'm going to choose a picture so i'm going to choose a picture from gallery then i'll just choose this code now that we have it i'll put a name then the the last name then i'll just put a number choose the code when we click submit let me bring up my so you notice that the local file has the creation date also remember in the in the upload image we we are saying that we want to use the name so here we are saying that we wanted to use the name but the name might not be unique so let's use the creation date which most of the times will be unique so let's save that so now if we come and say okay save it so we click submit you notice that it fails so that's because we have an issue here so we need to rerun the the ios such that it syncs up with the new pod we just installed so let's do yarn ios and we're going to be sending this dynamically when we get to work with the android part so let's uh, hold on for that so let's, let's finish rebuilding so that we can test it out again if we come back again let's choose a picture choose from gallery we just choose the same very picture let's put a name last name any country a phone we click submit so you see, you see that it creates the contact and then navigates after okay so it creates the contact and also the contact has a picture today not unlike this one so meaning that the upload worked so let's test it out and fix any other issue that we may notice so let's choose a picture so i'm gonna choose this one also let's say name one then this do this name two choose a country add to favorite yes so when you click submit you see that it goes ahead loads saves and also comes here so when it comes you saw you see that it's now can save the picture so if we go to firebase we can come over here and now if we come over here and go to files you should be able to see that we have contact pictures we have the user so this will be like a dynamic username as we'll see then this will be the contact and in here we will have the files being added so now we are done we are able to set up firebase we can upload pictures to firebase storage on ios so in the next video i'm going to come in we work on the android section fix any issues and make sure that the android app is able to do the same thing so if this video helped you and also maybe change this to dynamic data so if this video helped you please be sure to sub to subscribe don't forget to like the video because it helps you and i'll talk to you in the next video thanks for watching peace